Um, I'll, I'll be brief. Um, I, I started my um, activism um, when I was around 16 years old. And um, when um, opportunities to speak about climate change and the events that's been happening in the Pacific Islands and the climate change impacts in the Solomon Islands, what I usually talk about was my personal experiences. And for, uh, first of all, I li I'd like to share with you the story. Um, we were doing a climate change assessment um, research on um, some um, atoll islands in the east of the Solomons. And um, I went along with these um, government officials to this island. It's called the Reef Islands. And um, wh wh when we got there, the chief came out and he said, um, what took you guys so long? And um, I was quite surprised with the greeting we got. So we went and sat down and um, the, the government officials and the elders talked about how we need to move them away from the island because um, salt water inundation was making it very difficult to grow the crops. Um, the people, when, when they harvest uh, marine, an, um, marine animals to, to dry them in the sun and then sell them for the children's school fees, that was no longer working because um, the coral reefs were dying and um, livelihood on the reef islands was simply not good, not as before. So one of the guys asked the village elders, okay, this is our proposal and this may be your only way out. We have to get you, we have to get your whole community and go over to live on the mainland. And the village elder turned to the man and said, you don't tell me what to do, I will tell you what we're gonna do. You're gonna take our children and their children and move to another island and me and my elders will go down when this island goes down. And that story basically stays with me. Everywhere I go, I just find an opportunity to just share it and let other people know how extremely important and big this issue is, especially for the Pacific Island. According to the IPCC fourth assessment report, it, it identifies small island states as the most vulnerable countries. And this is not because we are small and ge because of a geographical location, but it is because we are already poor and we lack the expertise and the resources to handle the I impacts and the ongoing challenges that climate change will, will give to us. Climate change and its um, ongoing, ongoing impacts are, I mean, climate change is, has is already affecting our islands and from the many reports I've read about about what scientists predict for us, it's quite scary. Like nowadays like I can already see when 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 we talk about climate change and its impact on the agricultural scene, I can see that people can no longer grow root crops and when they kind of no longer grow root crops on land that's been inundated by salt water, then they cannot put their children through school. And with communities, with many rural communities that rely on rainwater, they, they have to find other alternatives to drink water. And most of them, they, they drink well water, and that's heavily polluted, and even salt water is in it. And then <coughs> on the fishery side of things. Um, many rural communities in the Pacific Islands, they rely on fish for livelihood basically. And with sea level rise, coral bleaching, bleaching and unpredictable weather pattern, this is like, the, it causes the fish to migrate to other areas and and the villages will be pressured to do other forms of activity to get the fish and this will and this introduces activities like overfishing and even using dynamites for for fishing and um, basically when, when I see these impacts coral um, coastal you know, um, coastal distractions and erosions continue on a big scale and when I hear that Marshall Islands and the Kiribati, if, if the seawater comes in one, one, one meter more, then 80% of the total land area will go, will go underwater. And that's 
very saddening because in the Pacific, where you come from is your identity and like Kiribati already has a plan in place. If the island goes in the water, then they will go to Fiji. So they may ask themselves, will we be known as Kiribati still or will we become Fijians? So me, myself and the Pacific team here, we listen to these stories and we want to come to events like this and share with you the young people of other developed countries so that together like you can go back and educate your own community to help us and together tackle climate change. In the future, you don't want us to come knocking on your door and ask, do you have space for us? We want to call our home, our home in. If our ancestors have lived on their island for many, many years, we want to do the same. I think that's all. Thank you.